So, can we, can I start? Hmm. Okay, so let's start the second day of the so multi-core, uh, many-core uh, programming. So, yesterday so I have uh, some questions. So, uh, the first the difference between uh, OpenMP and MPI. So, I suppose uh, everybody in this class knows this, but uh, so uh, I just answer. Oh, oh, I think it's not a, just a moment. Sorry, I forgot to start the. The screen is, the screen is now working. Hmm? Here. Ah, okay. Okay, and. Uh, yeah, I, I just started the. Hmm? No. You need to redo this because the, the screen size is changed. Hmm. Okay, so sorry. So, uh, just a moment. So this is a very typical architecture of the so uh, distributed parallel system uh, using a uh, so multi core clusters. So basically, so this time we don't have uh, so uh, about any. Uh, class about uh, so op, uh, MPI, but uh, so MPI is uh, so for the communication between nodes uh, through network. Okay, here and the uh, OpenMP is a parallel programming on each node by threading. That's a uh, so big difference. Okay, okay so uh, let's go to that so today's part. And actually, so I have skipped a several part yesterday. So I just want to start. Uh, from uh, okay here, okay. So, so I just show you the so shell script, uh, job script. So, I believe some of you have already run the code, and so. Uh, I just uh, show you the, some more detailed uh, so uh, description of each line. The first line is a so uh, so called the resource group. So it's the name of the queue. So you can specify uh, the some uh, computational resources uh, here. So I'll show you the detail about this. So you, you have to choose uh, from two types of the uh, so resource groups. <coughs> but uh, during the class, so today and tomorrow and after tomorrow. Uh, from uh, nine to uh, five, uh, you can specify your uh, lecture five. Okay. Okay. So next uh, uh, line shows us so job name. So uh, if you uh, so show the status on the screen, so this job name uh, will be uh, displayed on the screen. So if you run the multiple job, uh, you can change uh, the name of job, and so you can so easily find so which job is running or not. So next case is a so uh, so it's a so amount of the resources. Okay, so select equal one means a uh, one node, and so during this class, uh, so basically you just choose uh, select uh, equal one. So this should be fixed. And the next uh, parameter NCP use. So this is a uh, so number of cores. So this one uh, should be uh, one to eighteen. Okay, okay it corresponds to the so number of threads. And the uh, next one uh, is a group name. So this is also fixed. And so you should uh, probably uh, the original 
file shows a GT00 or something. So you have to change it to the GT25. So otherwise, uh, your job uh, is not accepted by the system and that, so doesn't run. Okay, so next one is also computation time, uh, wall time. So it's a hour, minute, and second. So during this class, so it's uh, the maximum uh, duration of the job is up to 10 minutes, okay? So this example shows a five minutes case. So provi please provide uh, so up to the uh, five, uh, 10 minutes, okay? I believe most of the job uh, will finish uh, in 10 minutes. But uh, so if we want to run multiple jobs, so uh, yeah, so you need more. Okay. And the next two lines, uh, minus E and minus O, shows us so, uh, standard error and the standard output. So you can change the name of the file. So uh, if you run the multiple uh, runs, so every time you can change the name of the so output file. So in the case of the C code, so you are uh, output is uh, so uh, written to the, this uh, standard error part. Okay, so if you like to uh, change that, so you can change that so code. But uh, so uh, default is uh, so uh, written to the so this uh, standard error part. In the Fortran case, uh, it will be output to the so standard output. So please uh, be uh, careful about that. So probably uh, in the case of the C code, uh, after running the code, if you try to open this uh, so standard output. So it, it's empty, but uh, important information is uh, in the, this uh, standard error, okay? And so next several uh, lines are, so they, these are something like a uh, so very uh, so essential uh, lines. So one is uh, so CD, uh, data, PBS, or work there. That means so go to the current uh, directory. And the next one is uh, so, uh, so something like uh, so uh, you in include uh, so essential modules, so you cannot delete this. And the next line is uh, export uh, OMP noun uh, thread equal 18. So uh, this is an uh, environmental uh, function. Uh, so you can specify the number of thread okay, from uh, 1 to 18. So uh, this number must be equal to the NCPUS here. So this 18 and this 18. So these two numbers uh, must be uh, identical. So that's a requirement. And also we have some uh, 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 statement here, export KMA, sorry, KMP affinity equal granularity equal fine or something. So this is also a, something like a, a so configuration of the core on each uh, uh, socket, okay. So each thread is assigned to uh, each core uh, starting from zero. So this is also an essential line. So you cannot delete this. So if you delete this one, so uh, sometimes uh, computation time is uh, slower, or sometimes it's very uh, so unstable. Unstable. Unstable means that uh, so if you run the code uh, five times or ten times. So every time, the time for computation is uh, very uh, fluctuated, okay? Okay, last one is also uh, numa uh, ctl uh, dot slash uh, sol20. Sol20 is the name of the so execution code, so-called load module. It's also a uh, program name. And also, this uh, numa ctl is also essential part. So uh, also, it binds the whole uh, thing on a single socket. So basically, so this uh, sol20 uh, is a uh, so uh, name of the co uh, program. So if you want to uh, run the different name of the program, so you can change uh, this sol20. Okay, that's a uh, so very brief overview of this job script. So I believe some of you have already uh, run the job uh, yesterday uh, by this. So available queues. Available queues is a queue is a so uh, available uh, computational resources. Okay, so we have two. So in each case, uh, we can use uh, so up to eight nodes. But uh, so in this class, we just use a uh, uh, one node for each person. Okay, so one is a U lecture. So U lecture is a uh, so uh, also the ten minutes uh, so uh, limit. 
so valid until uh, the end of October. So uh, yesterday we have some questions. So your account is uh, available until the end of October. Okay. So you can access a computer and running your jobs. So basically, uh, you can use this uh, U lecture. But uh, so we have another resource, uh, U lecture five. Uh, it's uh, active during uh, class time, so July fourth to seventh, uh, ninety five. Okay. So during the class, more jobs uh, compared to the lecture uh, can be processed upon availability. So for example, uh, after so five o'clock today, uh, go back to your home or go back to your office. So you you like to run some jobs. You have to use uh, your lecture. Okay. So this is just a uh, so class time, so nine to five. Okay. And also after uh, July seventh, uh, uh, five o'clock, you have to use a uh, your lecture. You can uh, only you can use a uh, your lecture. But, uh, so during uh, so uh, until Friday nine to five, nine to five, uh, you can use your lecture five. And also I recommend you to use uh, your lecture five because so. Uh, this uh, U lecture uh, queue is uh, so shared by all uh, educational users. So in Japan, there are several students uh, who are taking the class uh, classes uh, where uh, these supercomputers are used. So uh, sometimes it's very crowded. Okay. So uh, yesterday, so you have already uh, some of you have already run the job by uh, QSub. Uh, script name. So this is a so uh, very fundamental uh, command. It's a submitting job. Okay. And the next one is a checking the job status. So RB start. So if you type RB start, so that it's, it is displayed. Uh, the so okay. I show you the some examples here. For example, so I'll show you some uh, examples. So, Rasta GT25 uh, Z, CT OMP, and C, Portran, Multi Core OMP. Okay, so I'm Compile the code. And so go to the uh, run directory. And so uh, it's OK. And go.sh. So it's a uh, so lecture file. OK, and this should be GT25. OK. Okay, I, I think I, I should provide the uh, larger font. So it's a, uh, oops, it's. So run, you can run the job uh, by qsub code.sh. So if you want to show the status, so type rb start. So this means that uh, so, uh, it's already uh, started uh, to run the code. So there are uh, status uh, running means that so it's running. Okay. And uh, if it's uh, show the queued, uh, Q U E D or something. So it means uh, it's uh, waiting. Okay. And so. So this uh, shows us uh, no no jobs. So that means so you have already uh, finished uh, the running. So okay, that's a uh, uh, so status. And also uh, you can uh, so delete the jobs. Uh, so uh, so if you have some mistakes, 
you can delete or aborting the jobs uh, by typing the Q del uh, job ID. So job ID is also uh, you can find uh, by this number. So uh, if you type a RB stat, so at the first uh, so column you can find that this uh, some uh, uh, six digit uh, ID. So you you just uh, put this number to in order to delete your job. And also, we have uh, some uh, uh, checking state of the queues. That means so uh, you can specify the so you are available queues. So RB stat uh, RSC. So this uh, provides uh, so uh, the status of the queue. So actually, so your case and my case is different. But uh, for example, uh, you can see this uh, U lecture five. So this is now enable, okay? So enable and uh, start. But uh, so U lecture two, uh, I think, uh, so U lecture one is uh, my class, uh, which is uh, uh, so held on every Monday morning. So now it's not available. So in this case, it's uh, called uh, so disable and stop, okay? So we cannot use this queue. But uh, your queue, uh, U lecture five, is now uh, enable and start. Okay, so if you want to uh, check, so you are Q, you lecture five is available or not, so you just type the RB stat uh, minus minus RSC. So you can check the status. Okay, so this is a, uh, some uh, uh, example of the how to uh, use. Okay, so I'll show you the some uh, uh, very main part of the so uh, this uh, PCG code. Okay, so here uh, we just uh, parallelize the uh, uh, so conjugate gradient part uh, using the so uh, point Jacobi or diagonal scaling preconditional. It's a very simple uh, preconditional. Yes, okay. So this is the original code. Uh, so for example, so. Uh, so the difference uh, between the, this code and the ICCG is that just for the, this uh, uh, preconditioning part. So instead of doing the so, uh, forward and backward uh, substitutions, so this is very simple. So you can see here. Uh, so instead of doing the uh, so forward and backward substitutions, so just uh, so one statement here. So Z is equal to uh, R uh, multiplied by DD. So DD is uh, so, uh, so defined here in the early part. So DD is uh, so one divided by the so, uh, diagonal uh, components. So this means so R is divided, each component of the R is divided by uh, corresponding uh, diagonal component. So this is a uh, so diagonal scaling. So you can get the so Z here. Okay, so this is very simple. And also this is a, a part for the uh, dot product. It's the same as the so, uh, original ICCG. And uh, this part is also uh, computing the P. And uh, so this is also the same. And uh, after that, so we uh, get the uh, so, uh, Q equal AP by so, uh, matrix, matrix beta multiply. Uh, using CRS format like this way. Okay, this is also the same. And also, uh, we have uh, some uh, computing alpha and uh, updating X and R uh, using the, so, the conjugate gradient uh, definitions. And so calculating the so, norm of the so, uh, residual vector. So that is so, D uh, norm 2. And so we calculate the uh, error uh, by uh, calculating the so, D norm 2 uh, divided by B norm 2. And also, uh, Square root. So I have shown the so, uh, meaning uh, yesterday. And so finally, we check the so value of error, uh, ERR. And if it's uh, so smaller than uh, EPS, it's uh, converged. Uh, so otherwise, so row one is a uh, row, and so we repeat the same part. So I just uh, so briefly overview the so, uh, conjugate gradient algorithm itself. So only the difference is uh, so this part, so mz equal r. So it's much more simple. 
And so in this case, uh, we can do parallelization by OpenMP in the very straightforward manner. So just insert the uh, OpenMP directives. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, very brief overview of the OpenMP version. So if you go to the SRC20 uh, directory on the supercomputer, uh, you can find uh, this uh, program. So uh, if you go to the function solve PCG, uh, so you can get this one. Okay, so we start from the so uh, this summer declaration part. So you have to include OMP.h, uh, which I showed uh, yesterday. Okay. The first part is, uh, the beginning part is very uh, similar, uh, or actually identical uh, with the so original one. Okay, next, so we uh, initialize the so x and the w vectors. So in order to do that, uh, we can introduce uh, so OMP parallel uh, 4. So this part is also parallelized. So uh, compared to the so, uh, serial uh, initialization, it's a little bit faster. And also next uh, we have to do is uh, so this uh, so computing the so initial uh, residual uh, because uh, so uh, uh, x equal l uh, x equal zero but uh, so you can calculate by this way. So here you just uh, insert uh, so this program OMP parallel for private uh, i var and j. So uh, as I mentioned yesterday, so only thing you have to be uh, very careful uh, is uh, so uh, choosing the so private. Uh, so variable. So, so you have to be very, you have to be very careful uh, about that. Okay. So in this case, uh, we have uh, so two loops uh, for i equal zero to n and j for the so inner loop. So both of the uh, i and j are uh, so private variables. And also uh, you define the VAL uh, var uh, value uh, for each thread. Okay. So this is also a private variable. So you have to put. Okay, next thing is that so you have to uh, calculate the binom two. So this is a so reduction uh, computation. So this is also a uh, for loop. And so you have to add reduction plus uh, column uh, binom two. So because uh, uh, this binom two is a very special uh, variable. So you have to so declare uh, binom two here. And the next thing uh, you have to do is uh, so uh, calculate uh, so uh, WDD, okay. So WDD is also one divided by uh, diagonal components. So as I mentioned, so uh, dividing is a very expensive uh, computation. So instead of uh, so dividing uh, by uh, D, so you just uh, multiply this DD. So it's much more, uh, much more cheap, or much, much cheaper, okay. Okay, so uh, next part is also uh, main part uh, of the so uh, conjugate gradient loop. So at the beginning uh, and uh, so end of the so main loops, so we put some uh, uh, this uh, timing uh, part. Okay, so before uh, going to the loop, so we put here s time equal OMP get uh, w time. Okay, I think actually, yeah, yeah. so. We put the uh, so S time here and the E time here. So at the be beginning and ending of the uh, conjugate equivalent group. So here, so we uh, define the OMP get W time for uh, both uh, statements. So elapsed time for this part is uh, just uh, so subtracting E time from S time. So you can get the uh, computation time, uh, elapsed computation time. Uh, so between these two statements. Okay, so this is the beginning part. And actually, so there are several loops. Uh, and so you, you just, you have to do is uh, so just uh, insert uh, the so, uh, OMP pragma or OMP directives. So as I mentioned, so you have to be very, very careful for choosing the uh, private variables, okay? Okay, first one is uh, so just uh, so preconditioning. So it's a uh, very easy. So private i and uh, so just insert do uh, so directives. 
next one is also a dot product, so you need some reduction here. And the next part is uh, updating P vector, uh, conjugate, uh, gradient vectors. So in this case, uh, what you have to do is uh, just insert the so, uh, pragma OMP parallel for private I. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Because the beta uh, is also, uh, this is a global shared uh, variables, so you don't have to uh, specify the uh, private configuration. So next part uh, is a matrix vector multiply. So you can so refer uh, the original so pseudo uh, algorithm in right hand side. So they have a same color. So okay. So this part is also this part. So uh, this is also matrix vector multiply. So I have shown this example so several times before. So so uh, basically you what you have to do is uh, just inserting the uh, this uh, so uh, OMP pragma. But also, please be careful about uh, so choosing these uh, private variables. Okay. And the next part is uh, computing uh, alpha. So we need some dot product before that. So we calculate uh, so uh, C1 here. And so uh, after that, we have no, uh, it's a serial part. It's a so sequential part. So we calculate the alpha. Okay, next part is updating uh, X and R. And, uh, Calculating the denom two, okay, and so calculating uh, error ERR. Actually, so that's it. So, uh, so this is uh, so how to so measure the computation time. So you can uh, display the time for computation. Okay. So what I would like you to do is uh, so uh, changing the number of thread. And so, and so uh, calculate the time for computation and compare the performance. Okay, so as I mentioned, so you can change the number of uh, NCPUs and also uh, OMP number threads. So you have to change uh, both of the uh, so number here. Okay. Okay, actually this is the result, uh, computation time for PCG. Uh, so in the case of the uh, NX and NY and NZ are all 128. So this means the total problem size is, is uh, roughly, roughly two million of degrees of freedom. So actually, so measurements are not stable. Uh, so please adopt the uh, fastest record among uh, five or larger uh, measurements. So if you, so, so if you, the code uh, can run without this NUMA CTL. Okay, so in that case, uh, the result is very, the results are very stable, but uh, so they are generally very slow. Okay, so I think uh, uh, it's better to uh, put the so NUMA CTL, and so uh, so measure several times, and so choose the so fastest one. So it's a, a better thing. Actually, so we are now so try to find the stable and the fast way uh, so configurations. But uh, so currently, this is the uh, so best answer. Okay. So anyway, so this is a result. So this is a time for uh, computations uh, for the uh, this type of uh, uh, so CG solvers. So in the case of the uh, one thread, uh, we need we needed the thirty three seconds. But in the case of the uh, 18 quads, uh, it's just a four uh, second. But unfortunately, so you can see, so this is just a, so eight times or something. So this is a speed up ratio uh, from a single core to 18 core. So this line, okay, this solid line shows a so ideal speed up. So that means so uh, if we have a, so eight, uh, so this is a speed up. So if we have a eight thread, so the ideal speed up is eight. And so also uh, ideal speed up for uh, 16 or 18 and uh, 16 or 18. But uh, you can see the performance is not so good. So roughly 50% uh, or something. Okay. So uh, up to the four cores, it's very nice. But after that, so it's saturating and going to uh, like this. So not so good. Okay, so uh, I, I, I'd like you to do this uh, exercise later. Okay. So anyway, so I just go to the next part. So I just ask.
use some questions so far. No questions? Okay, no questions. But what is this? <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to, to show you why uh, the performance is less than 18 or 16. Okay. So this is uh, so mainly uh, because of the memory saturation. Okay. So performance of the memory for each thread uh, decreases uh, if number uh, of threads on each node increases. So, because the sparse matrix server is a so-called very memory bound, okay, uh, effect of this decreasing uh, is more significant. Okay. So, and, uh, another reason is the problem size is not so large. Okay, okay so this is a so comparison between the sparse and dense matrix. Okay. So, this is a uh, sparse matrix beta multiplication uh, using a uh, CRS uh, format, and uh, this one is uh, so, uh, so dense matrix. So in this case, it, the loop is very simple. It's uh, just uh, so double nested loops. So in the case of the, uh, so if you go to the, so this X vector in right hand side, okay? So we have X vector here and X vector here. So in the case of the dense uh, so matrix, so this X is uh, continuous on the memory. And so very easy to utilize the cache. Actually, this is a very naive uh, implementation. So if you get a higher performance, you have to do uh, more, uh, so further tuning, uh, even for the dense matrix case. But uh, so anyway, so this uh, so memory access is very continuous. So it's very easy to uh, extract uh, the performance. But in the case of the, uh, this uh, so sparse matrix case, so you just choose the only non-zero uh, element. So that means so the memory access uh, could be uh, random and also sparse. So continuity is not assured. So basically, this is, it's very difficult to utilize the cache. So if you compare these two uh, approach, so this uh, sparse matrix operation is more memory bound. Okay? So memory performance is very important here. So this is a uh, some uh, benchmark uh, result. So this is also a ICCG, but uh, application is a final element for a solid mechanics. But uh, it's a very very similar uh, application with ours uh, in our class. So this is rather uh, old result. So we, we compare the several uh, architectures on single node. So for example, this uh, SR11000 and the T2K. So both of them have 16 quads per node. And the peak performance is the same, uh, 1.147.2. Uh, so it's uh, exactly the same uh, peak performance. But uh, so this one, uh, stream uh, triad is uh, so performance of the memory. This one is 100. So this one is only 20. Okay, so it's uh, so 5 to 1. Okay. So if you uh, compare the performance of the application, so this is the gigaflop rate, uh, higher is uh, better. So this one is 90. Okay, one nine, and uh, this one is also uh, less than five. Okay, so uh, it's almost uh, so uh, ratio. This one, this ratio for the memory performance is five to one, and uh, this one is uh, roughly uh, four to one. Okay, okay. All those are uh, so uh, peak performance of the computation is the same. So because uh, this is also a very memory bound, so memory performance uh, strongly affects the so uh, performance of the application. Yeah, so you have to be very careful uh, with that. Okay? Okay, so this is a memory performance is very important uh, for this type of uh, application. Okay, so uh, we have a, uh, some very special benchmark uh, called stream. So this is the benchmarks uh, for uh, memory bandwidth. So this uh, uh, benchmark uh, measures uh, the performance of the memory. So there are 
four types of the benchmarks are copy, uh, just uh, copying the arrays, uh, scaling, and adding, and a triad. Okay, so we usually uh, measure the performance uh, using uh, this triad. So this is uh, more uh, complicated. So it's something like a so duck speed uh, application. Okay. So it's very similar. Okay, so uh, but uh, basically they are very provide a very similar uh, performance. But uh, so triad is the most uh, well uh, used or uh, widely used uh, so benchmark. Okay, so this uh, uh, benchmark is uh, developed by uh, Dr. Makarupin, John Makarupin. So I'm not sure, but uh, probably he's now uh, working for uh, TACC, uh, Texas Advanced uh, Center for Computations. So he was originally a summer, so faculty member of the uh, University of Virginia uh, in the computer science. And so he started to, uh, he developed this benchmark and uh, he started to measure many types of the so architectures. So then he moved to uh, vendors. So I met him uh, for the first time in 2003. At that time, he was working for IBM. But uh, he moved to uh, HP uh, or Microsoft or so several uh, so major computer companies. And so he is now working for some Texas. Uh, Computing Center. So if you go to this uh, uh, website, so you can find the so detail of the benchmark, and also you can find the so uh, many results. So in recent 20 years, so for various types of the architectures. So he has some uh, so results on this benchmark. Okay, so this is a very famous uh, figure. So you can find this, this one on the homepage by uh, John. So this is a gap between uh, performance of the CPU and memory. Okay, so this uh, red pattern is the CPU speed, and uh, this blue part, DRAM speed, is the so, uh, speed of the memory. Okay. So up to the early 90s, so CPU speed is uh, rather slower than the uh, memory speed. But now, uh, CPU speed is much faster than DRAM speed. Okay. And so this uh, uh, gap is uh, so going uh, so larger and larger. So, because uh, so CPU speed is very fast, uh, but uh, so uh, the memory speed uh, is not so fast. So that means so memory cannot uh, provide uh, enough amount of uh, uh, data to the CPU. So because uh, because of that, so we can not get the higher performance on the so memory band uh, applications. Okay. So. This time, so uh, we prepare so MPI version of the stream uh, benchmark uh, on the so uh, supercomputers, and also you can so compile this uh, so uh, program on the NTU cluster or your own PC, and so you can run the code. So with that, some uh, so very special uh, so options. Okay. So. I'd like you to do this, this later, so uh, compiling uh, your code and uh, running the, this go.sh. So this is the content of the go.sh. So you can change the uh, number uh, of the so, uh, so process. OK, so only thing uh, you can uh, change is uh, this part, uh, MPI prox. Okay. You can change this uh, from 1 to 36. Because so here you can use the so two sockets of the uh, single node, so you can change the MPI number of processes from one to uh, thirty-six. So this is something like a, so uh, OpenMP thread, okay. and also you have to change uh, this uh, GT twenty-five. Okay. So uh, other part is same. Okay, so this is a result of the triad uh, on the single node of the so read of CU. So peak memory performance is 140, uh, 153, okay, 153 uh, gigabyte per second. Okay. okay, so if you change the number of the thread or process from 1 to 36, the first one is 16 and second one is 32. So up to the 4, uh, the speed up is very nice. 
and up to the eight, uh, it's still uh, okay. But uh, so more than 16, you can see it's not changed so much. Okay, so it's almost flat. Okay, and also uh, the speed up is so around eight. So you cannot uh, so so increase uh, so the performance up to uh, so beyond the so 16 uh, threads. Okay, actually, so this is a uh, so something like so memory uh, saturations, uh, which I showed in the uh, so uh, several pages uh, before. So this is why the performance of the conjugate gradient is saturated uh, after the so uh, eight uh, so threads. So because the so memory performance is uh, so uh, so limited uh, like this way, so you cannot run the code uh, faster. So that's why so, uh, so we have some problems on the performance. OK, we have some uh, exercise here. So please run the code and uh, try various number of threads. Okay. And OpenB version and the single pro processor version are available both by Fortran and C uh, if you visit uh, this uh, uh, web page. OK, so any? Questions so far? And check the. Okay, we have, we have no questions. Okay, so uh, I'd like to close the uh, so final part uh, of this uh, uh, sessions. So by data dependency. Okay, so uh, so this time, so I just parallelize uh, so conjugate gradient code uh, with a very simple uh, precondition method. Okay, so our target uh, in this class is a parallelizer so ICC method, uh, which I uh, showed uh, yesterday. So actually. So except the preconditioning part, uh, forward and back and substitution and uh, uh, incomplete Cholesky factorizations, so the ICCG method and the PCG method with the diagonal scaling is the same. So I have already shown that the dot product part and the dax p part and the mat matrix vector multiple part. So that part is very easy to parallelize. So you just insert the uh, OpenMP pragma or OpenMP uh, directives. So that's it. So the performance is not necessarily good, but uh, you can get a so parallelization. Yeah. But the problem is a preconditioning part. Okay. So uh, so you can see that if you compare the point to Jacobi and uh, so also the uh, ICCG. So this is a very small case and old uh, computations. So you can see, uh, basically, so you need uh, so many iterations uh, for the case of the uh, point Jacobi. So in this case, uh, so 146 and uh, four, uh, 400. So almost three times uh, so uh, slower from the viewpoint of the uh, convergence. But uh, so if you compare the so cost for each iteration. So uh, ICCG cost is uh, doubled because the further backend substitution is almost uh, so comparable with the uh, so uh, matrix vector multiplication. But even if you include that effect, so the ICCG is still faster. So this is a uh, actual computation time. Uh, this one is also uh, one. 14.6, uh, 14.7 seconds, and uh, this one is uh, almost uh, 20 seconds. So, uh, so that means so ICC is still uh, 1.5 times uh, faster. Okay. So if you parallelize the code, uh, this uh, so difference could be uh, larger. So that means so you have to uh, parallelize the ICC solver. The difficulty uh, of the parallelization of the ICCG is also uh, uh, in the preconditioning part. So we have uh, so two uh, codes uh, examples here. So one is a uh, 
IC factorization before computations. So this is just uh, this just occurs once before iterations. But uh, so every iteration uh, we need to calculate the forward and backward substitutions. So this is just an example for the so forward substitutions. The problem uh, of this of these loops are uh, the conflict of the reading from and writing to the memory. So this is very difficult to parallelize. So I think uh, you should go to the, this uh, forward substitutions. So in this case, uh, we calculate the so value z, okay, z. Okay. But uh, you can see, so in this case, in both of the right hand side, uh, right hand side, and uh, so left hand side, so this the value of z uh, vector uh, so appears. So this is a so so called the data dependency. So this part is also writing the memory, and uh, this part is uh, reading from the memory. So uh, this type of the so uh, operation occurs uh, simultaneously. Okay. So if you try to uh, force uh, the parallelization for this type of loops, so we have some uh, problems. So because uh, so this type of computation is uh, affected by the sequence of the computation. So if you try to uh, force the parallelization, that will be a problem. But sometimes uh, it's uh, impossible. Okay, so let's think about uh, so uh, for the substitutions uh, using uh, for thread, uh, for thread. Okay. So this is a so for the, uh, substitution part. So for this type of mesh, so this is a very small mesh. Uh, we just uh, have only sixteen uh, mesh. So this is a so number of I cell, and uh, this is a so ID of the item L. So this is starting uh, from one. Okay, so let's think about uh, so for example this type of uh, so uh, parallelizations. So we just uh, so uh, divide uh, so these uh, sixteen meshes in. Four parts here. Uh, first part is zero to three. Second part is four to seven, and eight, eight to eleven, and uh, twelve to uh, fifteen. Okay. So then uh, we uh, apply the so program OMP parallel private. So in this case, uh, so this these four loops uh, zero to three, four to seven, eight to eleven, and twelve to fifteen. So these four threads are executed uh, simultaneously. Okay. So this is a uh, so, uh, mechanism uh, of the parallel computing. But uh, so, if you consider the so each part, so there are some problems. Okay. For example, uh, so we start the computation uh, for the first uh, items, so zero, four, eight, and twelve. But so, if you want to uh, calculate the so forward uh, substitution for this. Uh, four number four element, so you can see number four element uh, requires the result. Sorry, result uh, of the uh, this one. Okay, so because uh, so in the uh, right hand side, uh, the result of this uh, zero uh, appears, and also uh, eight uh, requires the result of four. So because uh, so result of four is uh, so appearing uh, this side. So that's a uh, problem. Yeah, I think uh, we should take a break here because uh, uh, anyway, so we have uh, only several pages, but uh, so I think this is a good point to take a break. Okay, so let's start the uh, uh, class in 10 minutes.